You just have to do some research and some consistent work each day to find the right combinations. But again, you're able to experiment for less of an investment, which is very useful. It's less daunting as well. What's going on, Axie fam? Elijah here back with another video. Today, I've got a very exciting one for you. We're going to be talking about floor axes, how to find them, what you're looking for, and building a really competitive team on a budget. So this video is inspired by Andrew or Ziori, who is is a integral part of the Axie community. And he said, I really wanna see a top 100 Axie Infinity player do an experiment where they start fresh with a floor team and see how far they go. I was all about this and excited. It's something I've been thinking about doing recently anyway. And some people threw around budgets of like 0 0.30 seemed, you know, some were saying even higher, but I decided to go with the 0.30 to 0.35 range. So I didn't start an account from scratch, but I did buy a team for 0.3 and went ahead and played with it in the top 25 of the leaderboard. I went four and two. Of course, this is a small sample size, but it just shows you that you can win games even at the highest level with a team of axes that wasn't all that expensive. So let's jump into what I did. Now, I'll be honest, this actually came to me in less than five minutes. I went out to see what was sitting on the floor. I started with plants and picked this guy up at 0.08. Ethereum. Okay, first of all, if you're going to make a great team with floor axes, they're going to have to be non pure. They can't just be the ones you go and search for six to six of purity because that's all going to be in the same bracket and usually pretty costly. People undervalue non pure axes wildly. Now, for your tank, what's important is that you can still mimic really high shields so you have durability in the early game and you don't just get dusted right away by a very aggressive team. Strong damage, especially beast or bug damage, is really valuable to help get through their tank. And we you know what I went with here was energy destroy to help control the pace of the game, especially early on. And this really meets all those check marks. I mean, as you can see, a few of these cards comboed together gives me upwards of 150 shield and damage to go with it, especially the hair, not that much shield, but big damage on opposing tanks. The health is a little bit low, but not terrible. Speed is sort of irrelevant. It's slower than most axes. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at what the current plant floor looks like to see what another option would be like to help give you more ideas. So you know what? I actually am going to filter this to something uh, where the health is over, let's just say over 51. I think lower than that and you're a little too vulnerable. So let's do that. And here we go. This would be my first pick for a frontliner. It would be this guy here, just because for one, very, very affordable, decent health at 53, and it meets those points that we're looking for. The only thing I would say is it's a little bit light on shield, but we do have Kaku, which is a zero cost to help out with that. And we can get some good round one, round two draws and survive an attack and put in a lot of damage ourselves. The Yam also might deter the opponent a bit from attacking into us straight away, which gives us a little more longevity. And now I can start to think about adding Cute Bunny to my other two axes or seeing what's out there at the floor for a Cute Bunny build. So I'm not saying this is perfect. This is just the first one that actually looked playable at the floor level. One more example is going to be this guy here. It just has tons of shield to help you out early on. It does have a high damage beast card, which is going to help us out a lot. Similar to the other tank that that I just showed, as we saw here, it actually had high damage bug and a high damage beast card. So this again is really gonna help us uh, remove the opponent's tank from the equation. Gila, slightly indifferent on, similar to the croc on the tank that I ended up buying. It's not amazing, but it gives us some good shield and decent damage. And the herbivore actually, I think is a little bit underrated. It could make this plant very difficult to kill. Uh, and we actually have pumpkin for big time durability. So those are two examples of what I am looking for when I'm shopping for a really budget non-pure plant. Okay, so this is the one that I ended up going with for my team. My midliner was just an absolute steal. I ended up getting this for 0.117. This should really not be much of a secret as to why it's good. Indes talks about it. I've mentioned it in several videos. Very high meta with the high damage 
beast card mixed into the aqua damage and in this case a bird card which uh, fits into the same category as aqua cards now again furball strikes three times so this ends up doing upwards of almost 150 damage i believe to plants i have the nemo on here which i'd really recommend for any tank that you get up front that doesn't have leaf bug you're gonna want a energy gainer somewhere else on your team in most cases it'll be nemo with aquas because i think they're a little stronger than beasts with cottontail in the current meta all right so we got this monster monster midliner and this is what I mean though it's really not pure at all and it gets lost under the radar because it has a beast part two bird parts right yet it really falls in line with a very meta-esque build so you're going to need to go do some hunting now the way you can search for something like this might not be uh, exact cards one by one because there's so many options but you're gonna want to go to aqua and you're still gonna want it to be relatively fast in order to meet the requirements that we're looking for so I'd say you don't want anything less than 52 speed and this is where I started in terms of trying to find the one I wanted and I also did want Nemo with it which is probably gonna be the case for a lot of you it should go with without saying, but we never want to get an Axie that has two zero costs like this. That's just tragic. So always avoid that. It's not enough firepower. And it's funny, I was talking to Indez and it looks like the sweet spot really starts to show up around like 0.12, but this is the first Axie that I've seen that is solid and playable. It just gives you, you know, it's sort of a classic Aqua. It doesn't have the beast or bug card to go with it, but it at least has a 40 shield card, which you could hold on to, to pair up and brick wall in the mid game a bit. It's nothing fancy but for that price definitely not a bad pickup let's see if we can get something slightly better for a little bit more so I'm having I'm not finding anything phenomenal uh, but I'll go ahead and call it as far as the aquas go with this guy here at 0.12 in terms of being on a budget really not bad it's a little slower than most but you have great brick wall potential this is almost like getting a sponge aqua sponge gives you 90 shield and 60 damage here you're getting 80 and 80 also drawing a card whenever you're shield breaks which is nice so a lot of outplay potential here if you're holding that bone sale for the mid game the speed is a bit of an issue but in a lot of matchups you'll still be in a good spot and again you'll be able to brick wall and get off a nice combo before uh, dying probably in the next round to faster axes but those are just a couple of things to get the gears churning and for you to start to think about you know how you can apply what we know to be strong meta builds but search for adjustments accordingly so this was a bit of a chain effect for me where I found this aqua. I figured I need a midliner that has Nemo for the energy. I know what type of aquas are good. I went out and found that and thought, well, now let's get creative. Uh, this guy happens to have Trump, which gets a damage bonus, a significant one when it's chained with another Trump card. So I figured, let's see what's out there. How about reptiles? They're durable. They don't die immediately to back doors. Let's consider finding one at a floor price that could happen have Trump potentially. So I went and searched, found this bad boy at the very, very bottom of the bunch for 0.105, and it has a lot of playability. Tiny Dino is amazing damage after round four, and it's nice because it doesn't rely on any trigger other than, you know, being alive past round four, and that does a lot of hurt to any class type, but especially aquas and birds, of course. The Trump balances me out in case I do end up against the beast in a 1v1. As long as he doesn't have like one of the most powerful four card beast combos, I should live through whatever he hits me with. And if I've been able to outplay well enough and save up for energy, uh, the Trumps plus dino can snap beasts off. In some cases, even two Trumps and a dino and maybe just chucking on a vine as well can get the job done. This has the ability to put up a lot of shield. We have the utility in Gota, as you can see, I also picked it up because it matches nicely with my frontliner. Two energy destroys, helps me control the pace of the game. And across the board, we can actually see how this makes sense and synergizes very well. Now, I'll admit, I've played the game a lot longer than most people, but that doesn't mean that you can't watch streams of high-level players, watch as many videos as possible, and start to come up with your own idea as to what you know is good. You know, if you played the game a little bit, use your own experience to try to piece the puzzle together and get some floor action. And the good news too is it makes it cheaper to experiment when you're only paying 0.1 or 0.12 Ethereum. If you buy something that's not working, you can sell it back fairly easily at that floor price and try again. So there's a lot of benefits to going about it this way. And you have so much potential to create really good teams that are fun and unique as well. 
So I actually picked up another option for my backliner shortly after going through this experiment, and that was just me seeing what was out there with the Trump on other Aquas, but perhaps one that could fit into a double Aqua team with Koi and a zero cost. And here I have one that is really pretty. Koi, Trump, Sandal for even more balance on the team. That extra bit of bug damage can go a long way. Confident, which is a zero cost that gives me 30 shield and boosts my morale, which helps me to crit a little more often, but also gives me more last last stand bars, which can help me win in some clutch situations. And this is a beauty. So the only thing that's a problem is the single Koi. I need to pair this with another Aqua card to get the speed bonus. So versus birds, for instance, I'm never really gonna wanna play one of these in the early game because I'll know that I'll need both of them to make use out of it. But that being said, I do actually have brick wall potential in a 1v1 to survive a four card bird attack with two sandals and two of these cards that should give me enough shield to live, which is pretty cool. And yeah, I mean, I just think for the price point, I got it for 0.12 Ethereum, which is pretty wild. It's a virgin as well. Some really janky genes, but hey, you could still breed it once, maybe see if you get something good. I think I'll go ahead and play a game and see how it goes so I can kind of display uh, some of the strategic elements around this team. So we're up against uh, this guy here who's got quite an annoying team, I must admit. Going to be a tough matchup for us. He's got Gravelant on the back line. Uh, most of my cards are melee but if I can get there with enough energy I have a really high damage bird card which is going to hurt this bug a lot so let's see what we can do right out of the gate you, we can see that I've made life fairly easy for myself um, with this plant meaning when I get the cards it's like I'm just gonna play them right away in most instances for the damage and the shield here I think I'll go with both godas now this build is honestly gonna be attacking pretty aggressively a lot of the time however I still think this play is worth it well that's annoying I'm gonna get feared I almost played Played the Nemo. Oh no, I'm not actually no fear trigger there. That's really really good We're not gonna get the steals But I played this guy before and there's not too much point in me holding and waiting for a timing to use them because uh, He just likes to press the buttons and do as much damage as possible fair play to him I suppose so we both have two energy at this point I haven't seen a pumpkin or a leak which are his two high shield cards I'm just gonna go ahead and pass this round so he still doesn't play one my plants gonna go down It looks like now he's used like a bunch bunch of cards on the midline and the back line. So I'm assuming he's a little bit dry. I think I've seen both cactuses on the back. So this would be a round where I anticipate uh, defense being played almost always. Like if he has the cards, they'll go up here, I think. He could try to fear me, but I actually think that's less likely than him defending. I'm just gonna go ahead and, I think I'll stock up on energy. This is sort of risky. Oh, there's the defense that we talked about. This was only risky because if he did fear me, then I would need these next round to negate the fear, but it seemed pretty unlikely, and this seemed like the way more consistent play. He basically gets very little value out of his pumpkins there. We don't attack into it, which is big for us. He still only has two energy. Now I know I can very cleanly kill this guy. He's probably gonna grab ant me and make my mid liner less effective next round so I need to account for that hold the two ranged cards I have I'm even gonna go with three of these to try to get through this plant because again I think uh, he he might defend and I want value out of these melee cards interesting this is a bit of an overkill kind of frustrating but i can live with it and maybe i should have saved uh the attack up there so kind of a slight misplay on my end probably hits me with the fear and now i've gotten rid of my nemos so that was kind of the problem i was talking about earlier maybe should have held that but he still only has two energy i have so much energy that i need a little bit of shield to survive here so i'm going to play these i have to live another round i'm expecting to see his nemos this round so i want to play this gota to slow him down a little bit I think I'm gonna need all this actually, unfortunately, but not that bad. Yeah, there's both the Nemos. I'll destroy one though, which will put him at three next round. And we're gonna live too. So that's important. This was kind of the best case scenario that I could hope for was getting here with some life to be able to get off a four card combination on this bug before getting gravel anted. So all things considered, you know, it could be worse. And I'll just be passing here and trying to do as much damage as humanly possible in the next round. He's gonna have four energy going into this next round. And there's both of our bird cards, which are monumental for us at this point. And we can see that this is going to be tons of damage. Here we go. Yeah, he has a lot of shield, but you know what? I expected that and it's fine. Ultimately, we're gonna, we're gonna get close here. 
He's gonna go all the way down to 71 HP. He's using all of his energy too, right? And one of those cards is Graveland. So really only three high damage cards and the other guy is just disabling us. And as you notice, of course, I'm never gonna play the Godas in that round because I need as much damage as possible. I need to hold these two range cards versus this uh, Gravelant bug. And now we just pray that this is somehow enough to get the kill. I mean, he only has two energy, so I think I'll probably see 90 shield from him with the Garish and Gravel, unless he just tries to go for two fears to kill me. But in that scenario, I think he dies. Oh, I think this is our game. Oh yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Winning with the floor team. Boom, and that's a tough opponent. I I lost my last couple games against that guy with you know a high meta build. So to get in there and beat him with this feels really satisfying, especially with a backliner that has only one mediocre range card. So happy with how that one went. We're now at the number 15 spot, and I anticipate that I will be using this team on some live streams in the future, as well as showing off that Aqua that I mentioned with the Koi and Confident Zero Cost bug damage. I think that'll be really cool to play with as well. Um, I'll probably be streaming in the next couple days here. Guys, if you haven't uh, caught one yet, I'm gonna be streaming way more consistently, probably like three, four times a week. So keep an eye out for that. It's usually in the evening PST time, like seven, eight o'clock around there. And soon enough, I'll have a very concrete schedule. Definitely come by and show some support if you can. And on that note, I think I'm gonna wrap up this video. I hope it was useful and I hope that you have a lot of success going out there and finding really powerful floor axes. Just trust that they are abundant. They are there, you just have to do some research and some consistent work each day to find the right combinations. But again, you're able to experiment for less of an investment, which is very useful. It's less daunting as well. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter. It's at ElijahCTG and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.